I love pretty much everything about Konosuba, but if you put a gun to my head and demanded I tell you what my absolute favorite part of it is, I'd probably point to the ending themes. For a minute and 30 seconds each episode, the series takes a break from madcap slapstick and cynical irony to simply bask in the pastoral beauty of the city of Axel and its surrounding countryside. There's no action and little comedy beyond Kazuma's inept fishing to be found in these sequences, only people going about their lives, a few in close-up snippets when those lives intersect with our main characters, but mostly we see them from afar in a tilt-shifted time-lapse view that captures in miniature the incomprehensibly enormous flow of daily life, every bit as beautiful in its own way as the sun and wind dancing across the water or the endless sea of stars drifting across the night sky. Each ED ends with Kazuma and his friends reuniting after a long, decidedly unproductive day, relaxed and ready to enjoy some good food in good company. It's a side of life we rarely get to see in most fantasy worlds. Konosuba, with its hilariously unmotivated heroes and relatively low stakes, is one of the few franchises that allows for such quiet asides on a regular basis, but even it leaves little room for them amid the laugh-a-minute pacing and comedic conflicts of its actual episodes, especially since its dark sense of humor tends to dictate its tone. Still, you can tell that this idea of simply relaxing and enjoying life between adventures in a fantasy world full of wonders both super and natural holds a powerful fascination for series director Takaomi Kanasaki, and with his new adaptation of Games Princess Connect Redive, he's finally been able to explore that fascination in full. Its plot can be a tad meandering, and its comedic edge is quite a bit softer than Konosuba's, but if you share my appreciation for those EDs, this show will make you smile like nothing else out there. And even if they didn't grab you the way they grabbed me, with everything that's going on in the world right now, you may find the show's core theme of enjoying good food with good company resonates with you in a powerful way. Princess Connect Redive is kind of the perfect escapist fantasy anime for this particular moment in time. In at least a couple respects, it's a perfect escapist fantasy for any moment. And in a moment, I'll explain why, but first I should tell you that this video is brought to you by Crunchyroll, where you can watch Princess Connect Redive along with all of Konosuba, including the movie Legend of Crimson, and an ever-expanding catalog of other great anime with new episodes added daily simulcast in English. English right when they air in Japan. And all you need to do to start watching all of it is head to crunchyroll.com slash basement or click that link in the doobly-doo to sign up for a 14-day free trial of Crunchyroll Premium. I should warn you now that if you've come to this video expecting my typical brand of in-depth narrative and character analysis, you won't find much of that here. There are some things about Prekine's story that I think are quite clever, and as a gotcha-driven waifu show, I wouldn't be talking about it at all if it didn't have at least a few lovable characters, but the main things that drew me to it initially were its tone and its aesthetics. What fucking aesthetics they are, though. The first thing that stood out to me about Princess Connect Redive is just how goddamn gorgeous it looks on every conceivable level. From bustling city streets and rolling fields to barren rocky canyons and shady back alleys, every last landscape and background we see in this show is vibrant, exquisitely detailed, and distinctively stylized to create a cohesively cartoony fairy tale world. And the composition of shots is frequently just as stunning as the art used within them. Measured application of CGI breathes further life into the world through windswept grass, shimmering streams and lakes, subtle and not-so-subtle lighting and depth of field effects, and particle-fueled magic that feels appropriately magical. Princess Connect never compromises in its efforts to make this world feel bright, lively, inviting, and truly fantastical. And it does it all without skimping on the animation end of its production even a little. Konosuba, particularly in its second season, boasts some of the most expressive and lively character animation out there, but it's undeniably a little rough and at times even ugly by design. Konosuba is a comedy first and foremost, and it always prioritizes strong visual humor over ensuring its characters look cute or cool. 
Princess Connect is a moe anime, first and foremost, so those priorities are reversed here. Prekine's main characters are animated in a softer and smoother fashion, a style designed to emphasize and maximize their cuteness even when the show breaks into full-blown slapstick. Don't worry, that doesn't mean the wacky comedy you'd expect of this director is missing entirely, just that it's been pushed to the side and de-emphasized. Princess Connect's background characters, bandits, thugs, and monsters are all allowed to look as ugly and goofy as is needed to get a laugh, and laughs they get. No matter how often the show repeats even the basic gag of, oh no, something's about to eat Protag-kun, the combination of hilarious monster designs and impeccable animation timing, particularly with Kokoro's shocked reaction, just makes it work every time. The jokes are fewer and further between than those in Konosuba, but that fits this series' more laid-back, relaxing tone. And even if it doesn't have me laughing out loud every 10 seconds, its animation is damn good at making me smile. If you've seen, well, any moe anime before, you'll mostly know what to expect here. Broad, beaming grins, cutesy pratfalls, and adorably flustered reactions to those things, often pointed straight at the camera for maximum impact. This is base, manipulative moe pandering at its most flagrant, but also at its most effective. I can see exactly what the show is plotting at every step, and that hasn't stopped me from falling for its tricks every goddamn time. The bouncy, energetic motion that makes Kanasaki's comedy work so well is perfectly suited to this sort of thing, and the show has strategic deployment of its most deadly weapons, like the Genki Girl Chipmunk Smile and Frazzled Sundere Fang, down to a goddamn science. Be forewarned, Princess Connect's waifus are dangerously adorable, or adorably dangerous in the case of the Twilight Caravan Guild, but I guess I should introduce our actual protagonists first. Those would be the prophesied hero Yuki, his diligent elf attendant Kokoro, the lovable gluttonous princess Pecorine, and her cat girl stalker slash future girlfriend Carol. All of them are cute as fucking buttons. Even Yuki, who's a little quiet and more than a little slow, like more than you'd expect even from a nearly mute amnesiac, but has a sleepy, calming presence about him nonetheless. He listens to and supports his friends in a simple, straightforward manner, and while he may not be good at anything, he's always working diligently to learn and improve. He is a good boy who must be protected at all costs, and a slow, satisfying breath of fresh air compared to most fantasy anime protagonists. Kokoro is equally soft-spoken and diligent, but in the more measured, intelligent manner of a Kudere. She's a supporter, through and through, in both her character and her class. Kokoro is always quietly rooting for and encouraging her friends, and all it takes to make her happy is being around them and knowing they appreciate her. She is a good girl, and I'd say she needs to be protected too, but frankly she can handle herself pretty well, and she and her friends have enough to worry about just keeping Yuki safe. Pecorine is my personal favorite of the group for... <clears throat> very good reasons, but also because I really like her personality. Her... her personality. Thank you. Pecorine is incorrigibly cheerful and optimistic. Some might say naive or dumb. In the first two episodes, she's following a pair of bandits who stole the sword her father gave her, but only to give them the medicine that they asked her to grab as a distraction when they were robbing her because it doesn't even occur to her that she might have been robbed. She's naturally inclined to believe in other people, and while she poured every point she didn't spend on wisdom and intelligence into strength, speed, and dexterity, she'd rather kill her foes with kindness than with a big shiny sword. She could, though, to be clear. The only thing scarier than her fighting power is her appetite. Carol, who before befriending the group is sent to assassinate Pecorine using magic monster controlling powers bestowed upon her by some as yet unseen evil mistress, has a much harder time dealing with that kindness and appetite than she would a head-on fight. While she initially tries to distance herself from her target in tried and true Sundere fashion, she can't help being drawn in by Pecorine's kind nature and all of the delicious food she keeps giving her, and slowly she comes to like her Kokoro and Yuki in spite of herself. It's 
really cute. Sensing her minion's heart wavering, that mistress reassigns Carol to spy on the princess instead, allowing her to join the others as a companion while dealing with a more manageable level of guilt. Together, the four form a fine dining guild called Gourmet Edifice with the goal of, oh, killing and eating some tasty monsters maybe, traveling to some places and trying great new dishes there. The specifics of their guild activities don't really matter so long as they get to enjoy many good meals together. If you're a fan of exquisitely detailed anime food porn, then you're gonna have a good time with Princess Connect's very literal eye candy. Wait, do crepes count as candy? I guess they're more of a pastry, and that definitely doesn't apply to onigiri, sautéed mushrooms, or gourmet fried bugs, but you know what? I'm trying to relax with this show. I'm not going to sweat a slightly imprecise turn of phrase. The point is, there's a lot of food in Princess Connect, and it's all drawn and animated so well that you can practically taste it just by looking at it. And a significant, satisfying portion of the show's narrative is spent simply watching its cute core cast enjoying that food while we get to enjoy their light, bubbly chemistry with one another. To anyone who's waiting on that delicious and dungeon anime, or who's enjoyed the likes of Drifting Dragons, Sweetness and Lightning, or Dinner with the Emias, I can't recommend this series enough. Though to be clear, that is not the only good fucking food on offer here. This is a gotcha game adaptation, after all, so it's to be expected that there are like 40 cute girls doing various cute things out in the city our heroes call home. And this is a Psy Games release to boot, so you can rest assured that the character designs are 10s out of 10 across the board. Some of these girls are so hot that I have trouble breathing when they're on screen, which is becoming a bit of a serious medical issue because Pecorine gets protagonist screen time, and every one of them who's not an absolute snack is a perfect cinnamon roll. At least one, besides Pecorine, the talking llama lima, gets to be both. Whenever she eats one of her magic apples, she transforms into a kimono mimi warrior babe in a manner that carries as many disturbing implications as Teddy growing himself a body in Persona 4. Her transformed state is pretty dang sexy, honestly, but then her llama form is just the most huggable thing in existence, and given how much fun the animators have portraying her more animalistic traits in that default mode, I honestly can't decide which one is cuter. From maids to demons to weirdo mad scientists, there's a waifu in this show for basically everyone, or everyone who likes waifus anyway, and unlike most gacha anime, Princess Connect doesn't bog itself down by trying to cram all of them onto the screen at once. The first three episodes really take their time establishing the core group of gourmet edifice with other girls only appearing as background characters or speaking extras. And when the show finally does shift to introducing its girls in episodic waifu of the week storylines, it always limits itself to focusing on one guild of three to five girls at a time. Not only does this make it easier to appreciate the waifus we do get to spend time with and empathize with the ones who need to carry more serious storylines, many of the background girls end up conveying more personality by not speaking than they would if they simply ran up to the camera and spouted off a recognizable in-game quote, as seems to be the style with these things for some reason. For instance, there's this one twin-tailed brunette elf cutie named Ayumi, but I only know her name from the series Wiki since we only ever see her in the show's backgrounds, where she's quietly spying on Yuki because she has a massive crush on him. There are a lot of great blink and you miss background character moments and gags in this show, and hunting for them, Where's Waldo style, makes re-watching the series a lot more engaging than you'd expect given its lackadaisical pacing. That kind of wordless visual humor and characterization has always been one of Takaomi Kanasaki's greatest strengths as a director, and with these almost wholly uncompromised production values, he gets to flex it in Princess Connect like never before. There's another thing he's always been good at that is at its absolute best in this series, something that Konosuba, with its hilariously unappealing heroines and emphasis on physical comedy, was rarely able to take full advantage of in the same way Princess Connect does. Well, I suppose we did get to enjoy a bit of it during Wiz and Luna's brief moments in the spotlight and whenever Yoon Yoon wasn't the butt of some cruel joke, but 
Princess Connect really brings that quality to the forefront. That quality being some of the best animated huge anime titty I have ever seen in my entire life. They're just so bouncy and squishy and round, every bit as fun and expressive as the great gazongas of Gainax without feeling overly cartoony. And between all of the different waifus and their incredible outfits, you get to see them framed and veiled in every way a degenerate otaku could possibly ask for. Except Nips Out, this is a PG-13 thing, and they are more covered than you'd see in a full-blown ecchi series, but they honestly look better than shows that show way more skin. The animation is just that good. Now, is it valid for me as a semi-serious critic to claim that as a significant point in a show's favor? I don't really care. Takaomi Kanasaki is a goddamn titty genius, and it is high time the world recognized his gifts. The only thing in Prekine that looks better than the titty in food is the fight scenes, which, holy Haruhi, just look at those! The fight choreography is wild and inventive, and every strike and slash is delivered with fluid weight and power. There's not a lot of narrative tension behind most of the fights, but they're so fun to watch that it really doesn't matter. They will drag you to the edge of your seat through sheer, breathtaking spectacle alone. I get the distinct impression that the entire animation staff behind this show is having an absolute blast making it, and even if it's not the smartest or most profound anime in the world, it is impossible not to smile along with them when you see how gosh darn fun it all is. That's not to say it's all sunshine and rainbows, mind you. There are more than a few hints of wicked machinations behind the scenes and some nebulous darkness encroaching on the horizon of this idyllic world, you know, old school fantasy adventure shit. From the word go, it's clear that Yuki and Kokoro have some grand destiny to fulfill, though neither of them knows quite what that entails yet. Pecorine clearly has some history as a proper adventurer who's seen some shit under her belt, and Carol's entire character is defined by her connection to that looming evil and her status as a potential traitor to the guild. Every aspect of Princess Connect's story suggests that what we're seeing here is just the calm before some great storm, the first stirrings of which are some of the darkest and most beautiful moments in the series so far. At some point in the not distant enough future, shit's gonna get really real for these characters, and the show won't let any of them forget it. Shit, the last thing Amos says to Yuki as she sends him down into the world is, you can't just keep dreaming forever. But all of the characters are doing their best to put that out of mind in the present moment and enjoy the dream while it lasts. I like that. I really like it. You'd think that a feeling of looming tension and melancholy would undermine the show's efforts to help its audience relax, but the truth is quite the opposite. Knowing that these happy times won't and can't last forever, that the responsibilities of real, or rather fantasy life, will catch up to these characters eventually, only makes the moments we do get to enjoy with them feel more precious. It helps to ground the show's indulgent, impossibly cute, and happy goings-on in the more relatable context of varied lives full of good times and bad. This is something that most of the truly great Moe series manage to capture, usually through a bittersweet graduation episode, and through its evil secret society subplot, Princess Connect sustains it in a setting where it could otherwise easily be lost. Escapism, the healthy kind of escapism anyway, isn't just about pretending that nothing's wrong with anything ever. It's about taking an intentional break from life's hardships and pushing them to the back of your mind, not out of it, so that you can recharge your batteries and, when you need to, face them head on. That is the general vibe Princess Connect Redive gives me, and right now, I am vibing with it like crazy. Thanks once again to Crunchyroll for sponsoring this video, and to all of you for watching it. Let me know in the comments below which of the snacks in Princess Connect Redive, however you want to interpret that phrase, is your favorite and why. And while you're down there, please hit some buttons, they mostly explain themselves. I'm Jeff Thu, professional shitbag, signing out from my mother's basement.